Good afternoon. Hundreds of travellers are on the move again in Hampshire following a massive police operation to clear an illegal camp at Otterbourne. Meanwhile, council chiefs have been assessing the damage to their rubbish incinerator, which was vandalised. They say the cost will run into hundreds of thousands of pounds. Nigel Burwood reports. The travellers began to move in large numbers this morning. They were given orders to go last night when 250 police officers arrived on the site with eviction notices. Behind them, hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of damage to Hampshire's main incinerator plant. County Council chiefs say it could be out of action for some time. We'll be lucky if we see any change out of £100,000, but we're still assessing what damage there is and whether the, the plant can be started up again without extensive repairs. Crucial thing is the control room, which has been obviously uh, penetrated by people over the weekend. It's, some of the instrumentation has been smashed, paint has been sprayed around. We're waiting for that to be checked out to see, in fact, whether it's a small repair job or a big repair job. On a normal Monday, a 100 lorry loads of rubbish would come into this site. Today it's been taken over by police and forensic experts hoping to find clues as to who did the damage. We've got some very good fingerprints in some part of uh, the building and, and uh, there's going to be a very real investigation and it's my intention that those people who've committed this damage or as many as them that we can find will be prosecuted. Yes, watch this space. Newspaper headlines this morning claim the damage was caused by travellers taking revenge. They totally deny responsibility for it. We're not going to do things like this with the press that we got last week. It's just not, it's just not going to happen. We got kids and that, and we're not going to carry on like this. These travellers are now looking for another site which won't get them into trouble with the law. Nigel Burwood, TVS News, Otterbourne. Meanwhile, a 16-year-old youth will appear before a juvenile court today accused of criminal damage. The travellers handed him over to the police after the fire at the waste plant. The police stress he's accused of criminal damage and not arson. Efforts to move on a group of travellers camped at another site at Romsey in Hampshire have failed. The police are waiting to find out who owns the land. Most of the travellers have already dispersed after holding an illegal party there on Saturday night. The MP for Romsey and Waterside, Michael Colvin, says many of his constituents are calling for legislation so that troops could be brought in to disperse travellers' camps. He's asking the Home Secretary, Kenneth Clark, to open a top-level inquiry into the events of this weekend. Basingstoke Council are defending their decision to approve a rave party licence at Popham Airfield near Basingstoke, despite fears by some locals about noise. The council said it intends to restrict the numbers of raves to six a year. That way they can be properly organised. Fiona Oates reports. The rave at Popham Airfield later this month is designed to set a new world record for the biggest ever dance party under canvas. Raving from eight at night to seven in the morning. 20,000 people are expected to attend. Basingstoke Council gave the scheme the go-ahead, saying a legal rave can be controlled. Wouldn't it be better just to ban the raves? The easy answer to that would be, in the first instance, say yes, but it's, it's not the fact. If we don't actually have a licensed uh, party, it would be an unlicensed one. An unlicensed one, we'd have no control. So, in this way, we can actually control the event, work with the fire brigade and the police to try and ensure that it's a good event. An earlier rave this year at Matchams in Dorset brought complaints about drug taking. The planned rave at Popham has already aroused fears about noise. The final licence for the rave will not be granted until council officers have inspected the site for noise levels and safety measures. Tickets, though, are said to be selling fast. Fiona Oates, TVS News, Popham. Hampshire police say they're keeping in close contact with colleagues in London investigating the murder of a woman on Wimbledon Common. Officers trying to find the killer of the Surrey teenager Katie Ratcliffe have been talking to detectives on the Rachel Nickell case. Rachel was assaulted and stabbed while out walking with her two-year-old son. Police have arrested a 27-year-old photography student from Liverpool. Katie Ratcliffe was stabbed to death two months ago. Her body was found dumped at Farnborough in Hampshire. Police say there are as yet no firm grounds to link the two cases, but they're keeping an open mind. Two youths arrested by detectives investigating the murder of the 15-year-old Hampshire schoolgirl Helen Gorry have been freed. Helen's body was found by wedding guests attending a reception close to her home at Horndean near Havant. She'd been strangled. Police say one of the youths was the man referred to as John in Helen's diary. He spoke to her by telephone shortly before she was killed. Officers say they have no plans at present to re-interview either man. 
A Hampshire schoolboy seriously injured when he was thrown from a fairground ride is said to be making a good recovery. 15-year-old Scott Matthews is out of intensive care and is in comfortable condition in hospital. He was flung 25 feet from a ride called the American Dream Trapeze at Hailing Island. Officials have been trying to discover how he slipped under the safety bar. He suffered a collapsed lung. Animal rights activists are being linked with an attack on a Dorset Farm Foods company. Three vans were vandalised at Violet Farm Foods on the Uddens trading estate in Ferndown. Damage is expected to run into thousands of pounds. The crippled Southampton liner QE2 is limping into Boston Harbour in the United States after hitting a submerged object. The luxury ship has a 70-foot gash below the waterline. It's thought she struck a sandbar. An official from the Southampton-based Marine Accident Investigation Branch is now on the vessel. 1,800 passengers were moved from the ship early yesterday. Her owners, Cunard, say she'll undergo repairs in dry dock and should be back in service by next week. Soccer and Bournemouth Football Club today announced a new sponsorship deal with the pool-based publishing company Exchange in Mart. The one-year deal is worth £30,000 and there's a chance of continued support next season. The club, with debts of £2.5 million and losing £5,000 a week, had been desperate for sponsorship. Manager Tony Pulis said the money would keep the club alive, but none would be available for new players. Cricket and Hampshire are struggling to avoid defeat on the final day of their championship match with Kent at Canterbury. They've slumped to 68 for nine, a lead of just 104 runs. Eight wickets for Martin McCaig. But Sussex are in a strong position against Derbyshire at Eastbourne. Pace bowler Ed Giddens has taken four wickets to reduce Derbyshire to 92 for five, 110 runs ahead. The seafront at Worthing is smelling sweeter than it has done for years. Usually at this time of the year, there is a bad smell from piles of rotting seaweed. But because the World's Bowls Championship started in the town this weekend, the council has carried out a major clean-up. Workmen have also pushed the seaweed back into the sea. And that's all the TVS news from the south. There'll be more from us at 3.15. Until then, bye-bye. Good afternoon. Well, what a change from the weekend. Much cooler and fresher today. And I think this cooler, fresher weather, weather with us for most of the week. A bit of an unsettled week. There will be rain at times, quite breezy, but most of that rain probably coming tomorrow in the shape of showers. Let's have a look at the satellite picture. We can see what's happening. We've already... That's the cloud that brought us those hefty thunderstorms over the weekend. That's well out of the way now. Nice and clear down the centre. But there is a small band of showers already pushing in towards Dorset to come across this afternoon. But out in the Atlantic, quite a large area of showers building up ready for tomorrow. For the rest of the afternoon then, it's patchy cloud and sunny spells and a scattering of showers. They'll be coming through as the afternoon goes on. If you're unlucky, it could be a heavy one, but still many places could remain dry. Temperatures around 22, that's 72 degrees Fahrenheit, but quite a brisk southwesterly breeze building up. Tonight, dry and clear for most of the night, although it could well start to cloud over Wilkshire doors, are perhaps beginning to push in towards Hampshire by dawn tomorrow. But a fresher night in the layer. temperatures down to 10, that's 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And then tomorrow morning, sunshine for Sussex and Surrey to start off with, but this cloud tending to spread its way across as we go through the morning, showers middle to late morning onwards. During the afternoon, a good deal of this cloud around, a little bit of sunshine between the showers, but quite frequent showers, some of them on the heavy side. Quite breezy as well, those winds picking up, we're looking for a southwesterly 4-6 in the channel, and there could be gusts to 35 miles per hour. Looking into Wednesday, well, quite a bright start, but clouding over quite quickly. Could be some light rain round about the midday time, but generally dry for the afternoon. Temperatures around 21, that's 70. That's all for me now. Good afternoon. Check this out. Movies this week on TVS. Tennis of Ellers is in need of more manpower. I've taken two dozen men on two missions, and except for a couple of them, they're all dead. My idea is that you start finding Another dirty dozen. And it's firepower that Charles Bronson needs as Mr. Majestic. Man, I hope you know what you're doing. Clint Eastwood does. He's aiming to stay out of the firing line. You need a bigger target? There ain't none in this county, baby. 
Tenor Savalas, Charles Bronson and Clint Eastwood, a formidable movie star lineup this week. In just a moment, we'll be visiting Summer Bay for today's Home and Away. Why is this little girl so sad? Ah, her friend knows. That Terry nappy seems to have brought her out in a rash. He's wearing pampers, so his skin is drier and healthier. If you wet a Terry nappy and a pampers, you'll see that while the Terry nappy can let wetness leak back, Pampers' unique lock-away core locks wetness deep inside, away from baby's skin. Clinical tests prove that Pampers are better at helping to prevent nappy rash than Terry nappies, so babies stay drier and happier. Pampers. Healthy skin begins with dry skin. With special packs of Golden Wonder Crisps, you'll find out instantly if you've won cash prizes from 10 to 10,000 pounds. A one! And there's a chance to win a million! <laughs> Opening a packet of crisps has never been so exciting. Golden Wonder Crisps, they could be worth a packet! I share a house with four girls in a hard water area. Dub lather duff as if it was a soft water area. Sometimes I have a dry patch here, but after dove, it hasn't happened. And my skin's soft all over now. Dove contains neutral cleansing ingredients and one quarter moisturizing cream. It won't dry your skin like soap can. Two of my boyfriends said, hmm, your skin's nice. To get a hmm out of him means Dove's doing something good. <laughs> we'll be in Wandin Valley in half an hour. And the latest escapade in a country practice, Joe organises self-defence classes at the club, but uh, is a little unhappy for some reason. We'll find out why in half an hour after this visit to Summer.